<laughs> Look at that running animation! <laughs> Hey, Jarek here, and I have been requested to play this game for so, so many years. It's notoriously awful. However, looking at footage of it, it just looks like a generic first-person shooter. I expected to get a mediocre game that was very short, that people kind of maybe exaggerated how bad it was. I wasn't ready. Holy hell, this game is awful. And while I think it's hilarious that I'm wearing a shirt about a movie franchise that's significantly better than Battle Los Angeles, that sparked games significantly better than Battle Los Angeles, even Colonial Marines is better than Battle Los Angeles. Bad. It's in the title. Anyway, let me change into a more comfortable shirt. Oh, hey, would you look at that? It's today's sponsor, Into the AM. You've probably seen me wearing these shirts as I stream, and that's for good reason. They don't pay me to do that, they're just really comfortable. They're very soft shirts, and that softness does not go away when you wash them. There's no tag to scratch the back of your neck. They really are just high quality shirts. Also, these shirts fit me well, which is something I usually struggle with. I have broad shoulders, I'm very lanky, that's a bad combination for finding well-fitting shirts. Thankfully, that's not a problem I struggle with with these shirts. They also have a ton of different designs. They're constantly restocking their old designs and they keep adding in new ones. They've also now added in hoodies and tank tops, if that's your thing. These are also just as soft and just as high quality. They also have some current deals. You can get three graphic tees for 60 or three basic tees for 45. On top of that, if you go to intotheam.com slash dragon shirts, you can get 10% off site-wide. That stacks on top of these deals. So if you want to check that out, into the am.com slash dragon shirts or just click the link down below in the video information to make things easier. So huge thanks goes to into the am for sponsoring this video. And let's go back to Battle Los Angeles. I really don't want to. Do we have to? Ugh, I guess we have to, but I can procrastinate for a little bit longer because I have to explain how I even got this game. So Battle Los Angeles released in 2011. It was purely a digital release. You can get it on Steam, Xbox Live Arcade, or PSN. Problem is, it got delisted around 20. 16, so there's nowhere to buy it now. And since it never got a physical release, you can't just go buy a used copy. I went to look at some of these third-party key reselling websites, like say G2A, who apparently had keys for $500. Yeah, no thanks. So that really only left me with two options. Either go to those websites that say free download here and you may get your ISO of the game or maybe you'll get malware or maybe you actually do get the ISO but the crack is malware so that's not really a viable option. My only real option was to go and try and pirate the game and just hope that for some ungodly reason there was a torrent that actually had cedars of this game. I found exactly one torrent of this game and that torrent had one unsung hero, a single cedar. If not for this man or woman, this video would not be possible. This hero saved my content. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing considering the game I'm covering today. Either way, the download is only 1.43 gigs and it did work. And as a reminder, this game is not being sold. So don't yell at me about piracy or anything like that. There's literally no other way to get the game. I did try to go to myabandonware.com. I love that website. That's how I find a lot of games, but it didn't have it. Neither did other abandonware websites. Okay, so I got the game. How's the PC release? Well, surprisingly, okay. It did that annoying thing where when I launch the game, it throws my windows all over the place because it launches in 720p when I'm playing on a 1440p monitor, but that was kind of standard for that time. More surprisingly, it actually has a 1440p option and most of the graphical settings that you'd expect are there. There's no weird wonky mouse acceleration. Aiming feels perfectly fine. There's no annoying motion blur. Like for the most part, it's okay. It didn't crash on me either. However, it's omitting one option, one very, very important option. There's no FOV slider. And this FOV is the worst I have ever seen. Let's see, let's see, look at how far the truck on the right, how close I am to that. How much farther forward it, away, it is away from me, but if I look straight forward, I, I can't see it. If I had to take a guess, this is around 50 FOV. Now, I don't usually get sick if the FOV is low. In fact, I've never gotten sick from that before. It has given me headaches, and I do know of people that get sick from low FOVs, but it's never been me until I played this game. This FOV is so bad, it had me feeling nauseous after about 10 minutes. Thank God the game is short, so I didn't have to play it for that long. For those that don't understand why this is such a big deal, let me explain it this way. Here's why you need it. When you're playing on PC, you're only a few feet away from your screen. 
It's taking up more of your view, so you need to be able to see more. If you're playing on console, you're probably sitting further back on a couch where a narrow FOV is going to be better for your situation, or at least not a hindrance. If I'm playing at my PC, this is what it's going to look like. If I'm playing on a console, I'm probably sitting somewhere back here. That's not too bad. This, this is pretty bad. And since this is a game no one really cares about, there's not a workaround to change this. Oh man, you're just gonna have to deal with it. The actual graphics themselves, well, the texture work is subpar. The game doesn't necessarily look like the worst thing I've ever seen, but it's definitely worse than most games in 2011. To give you an idea, this is the same year the Battlefield 3 came out, but what really stood out to me with this game, these animations are so bad, and that's for everything in the game. Walking animations for your friendly NPCs, walking animations for the aliens, the weapon reload animations, all of this is awful. And legit, does look like duty calls. <laughs> what? Oh, and I'm just back up. What an amazing cutscene. Hey, Fox Club Niner. I'm gonna point at you and say something serious to further develop the game's storyline. Oh, my dead. Increasing the drama of the story. When the quality of your game is equal to that of a parody that the developer put no time into just as an advertisement for their actual game, that speaks volumes. The story doesn't fare any better. I was not expecting these cutscenes. Wow, look at this. <laughs> A singular picture. It's a slideshow with a cartoon. <laughs> what? These are the worst cutscenes. They just do not fit what the game is like. What? <laughs> what? Look at that running animation. <laughs> Holy, what a trans. <laughs> what a transition. <laughs> His arms. <laughs> Holy hell, that's so bad. This looks like their storyboard, like their proof of concept that they just shoved into the final game. Why wouldn't you just use in-game cutscenes? Oh. Oh, that's why. The voice acting is not any better. It almost feels like they recorded a one take and said, good enough, ship it. But to make matters worse, they obviously recorded all of these clips at different times in different studio booths with different quality. The characters in game could be talking two feet away from each other. One of them has a horrible amount of echo and the other one does not. Tech Sergeant Santos, Air Force 61st Wing Intel Unit. The rest are National Guard. What happened to you, Tech Sergeant? I assume you were ready to use that weapon, Tech Sergeant. I did a tour with a joint unit in Afghanistan, Staff Sergeant. They either ran out of time, didn't get paid a whole lot, or just didn't care. Man, this is bad. To make things even better, the subtitles in this game use Comic Sans. I'm not kidding. Wait, heart. is that... Is the no, font for the subtitles Comic Sans? I... <laughs> What? Objects are slowing down substantially. Why? Now, you could have all of these negatives in a game, but if the gameplay was good enough, I could maybe somewhat forgive it. Yeah, that's not the case here. This gameplay is awful. This is attempting to be a modern military shooter, a Call of Duty knockoff with the problems that Call of Duty has, but exaggerated to a ridiculous degree. For example, this game has the asthma sprinting that Call of Duty does. Sprint a certain distance and you gotta stop for a little while. A very short distance. But it's even worse in this game, because once you can't sprint anymore, you walk at a crawling pace. Why can't I even walk here? Why does it slow me down this much? Like this becomes a problem just to get to the next checkpoint even when you're not getting shot at. It just, why? But it wouldn't even matter because even if you got to the objective earlier, you still have to wait for your friendly NPCs to tell you what to do. Even if you know what to do. You know you have to shoot this lock? Well, you can't do it yet. You have to wait for that NPC to say you can shoot that lock. Then you can do it. You need to be able to climb this ladder. You can't do it yet. You gotta wait for a few of the other guys to climb the ladder. Then you can do it. You know you have to climb this ladder and escape. Well, nope. You also have to wait for other NPCs. They recycle that one a lot. Wow. I can't. I have to the wait while they talk and just look at it. We destroy it. The skies over Los Angeles will be clear of the enemy. Basically, this game is scripted in the worst possible way. As for the actual shooting in Battle Los Angeles, 
It's some of the worst gunplay I've ever seen. There's no recoil to these weapons. There's no feedback to these weapons. It's hard to even tell what's really going on. The standard M4 you get will take literally a whole mag to kill one enemy. That whole time, there's barely any muzzle flash. There's like no recoil. It barely shakes your screen at all. You can't really see where your bolts are going or even know that you're hitting the enemy. And since they're really bullet spongy, it makes it even worse. Oh man, this gun, no recoil. It doesn't even look like I'm shooting anything. It just Eyes open, stay alive. that's me shooting that, that <laughs> my goodness. Very quickly, I realized the sniper is just the better way to go because this actually will kill in one shot, except for the times it just misses for seemingly no reason. And these are the only two weapons you'll use throughout almost the entire game. The only other weapon you can pick up is a rocket launcher to shoot down an alien spaceship or drone or whatever this is. I'm not kidding you, the whole game, you were just using an M4 and a sniper. There is technically a fourth weapon, but I'm not counting a turret on the back of a Hummer as a weapon, That that's cheating. There's only three weapons in the whole game. Similarly, there's only three enemies in the whole game. You have these standard walking enemies. This is what you're going to be spending 90% of the time shooting at. You have those alien spaceship drone things I mentioned, which only really show up as like a mini boss battle, like twice at the end of the game. And then you have these walker turret type things. The introduction on how you take these out is hilariously bad. Now you've seen this cutscene before, but what you didn't see is that I had a sniper and an M4 when I got onto that turret. When it blew up and knocked me off the Hummer, I didn't have my sniper anymore for reasons. This was a new enemy type. I didn't know if I needed to shoot it a bunch or what really to do here. There didn't seem to be anywhere I could go, but there actually was. Out of the way on the left here, you can flank around. This is a path that is incredibly easy to miss. It just looks like it's blockaded off. But more importantly, once you go down this path and climb on top of this, it gives you another sniper just so you can actually snipe the walking turret guy. Yep, these walking turrets are not a new enemy. It's just the regular alien enemies pushing it around. So let me get this straight. You took away my sniper, hit away the path, and then gave me back the sniper to shoot the new enemy that wasn't really a new enemy. How is it this bad? Oh, but it gets worse. You know that RPG I mentioned? Seemingly, it can't shoot through open windows. But also, this doesn't kill you somehow. It's actually kind of difficult to die in general in this game. You just sort of soak up damage like no one's business. Unless your friendly NPCs are shooting at you because that's a thing that can happen. Let's try hip fire. Is the muzzle flash even line? My own, my own friendlies just killed me. <laughs> so there's friendly fire in this game. We have learned. Also, I like how it just said death. If you step in front of one of many friendly NPCs, they will shoot you. Not intentionally, they're just trying to shoot at enemies. They do nothing to enemies, but they kill you super quick. But you can't shoot them, no. This is a one-way friendly fire. Only they can do damage to you. Your friendly NPCs also never stop talking, and they only have about four voice lines. Fire Random dead bodies, you. okay. Shots hit me! They get you! Shots hit me! Shots hit- we just got out of a cutscene, what? Get There's the no one else even here, who is he talking to? Really? They, they they got you. You're shot right at the beginning of the level, right after the cutscene, where nothing happened. Hey, you okay? No skull. Oh, they actually killed something. You okay? Shots hit me. Again, same conversation. These guys have like the same four voice lines, and they just don't stop saying them. Give me some cover. Stop talking. Still in one piece. Took one. Now, how many times are you gonna get shot? But do you know what the real kicker for this game is? The length. Wow. That's the whole game. This stream, I've been streaming for 55 minutes, and the first 10 minutes of this stream, I wasn't playing the game, I was talking to chat. I beat this game in 40 minutes. Yep, you heard that right. 40 minutes for a first time playthrough where I'm not rushing, where I'm taking my time and talking to my Twitch chat the whole time. This was legitimately a movie tie-in game sold on the Xbox Live Marketplace, PSN, and Steam that was 40 minutes long and didn't have a multiplayer. When you beat the game, there are some unlockables. For example, you can look at concept art. Woo. There's also some modifiers you can use like Hollywood mode, which is just supposed to dial up the ragdoll, but honestly, it makes the ragdoll look closer to being viable instead of them just being bullet spongy. It's still ridiculous, but at least there's a little bit of feedback now. Either way, it doesn't make this game more replayable or worth it. In conclusion, this game is notoriously bad for a reason. 
I came into it again expecting to just kind of have a mediocre game that everyone kind of exaggerated, but no. It has a bad reputation for a reason. It's genuinely that bad. I would say don't buy it, but I mean, you can't anyway. So instead, I'll just say don't bother going out of your way to try to pirate it or whatever. It's not worth your time. And thus, I finally put off making a video of Battle Los Angeles and got this one done. I have seen this game be requested constantly for, I want to say, a good five years now. So maybe that request will stop more likely people will keep requesting it not searching my channel first but yes that should sum it up again a big thanks goes to into the am.com slash dragon shirts to get 10 percent off their entire store site-wide and as a reminder the current deals three graphic tees for 60 or three basic tees for 45. huge thanks to everyone that joined me over on twitch i had a huge amount of people watching me more than usual people love watching bad games for some reason my twitch is twitch.tv slash jerk for gaming dragon if you subscribe including with your prime which is free you get to see my videos ahead of time. And of course, a huge thanks goes to all of you for watching this video.